Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Fish, the series where I not so subtly hide a guitar on my bed in the background to preview upcoming reviews. Let's jump straight to your questions. What's your take on the new Billy Joe Armstrong signature for 2018? Not a Green Day fan myself, but I think the guitar looks killer, especially in black. Honestly, I'm kind of torn on this one. So Billy Joe Armstrong is, of course, the frontman and guitarist for Green Day, and Gibson has just announced a new signature Les Paul Jr. This isn't his first signature model with Gibson. It's not even his first Les Paul Jr. signature model with Gibson, but this is the 2018 version. It comes in three different gloss nitro finishes, ebony, maraschino cherry, and sonic blue. Spec-wise, we're talking a mahogany Les Paul Jr. flat top body, a mahogany slim taper neck, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length, 22 cryogenically treated frets, and a 12 inch radius rosewood fingerboard. No surprises there. It's got a single 57 classic in the bridge, one of my favorite Gibson humbuckers, and a one volume, one tone control scheme. It's also got a really odd shaped pickguard. So I actually really like it in the Sonic Blue. It's like an Epiphone SL or Gibson M2 that's not kind of a piece of shit. Lately, I've been really digging the single humbucker configuration and the look of light pastel colors, and this ticks both those boxes. Plus, it's a single cut, and you know I love those. However, I think we have to talk about the price point because to me, it doesn't really match with the minimalist vibe of a Les Paul Jr., and it also seems at odds with what Billy Joe himself envisions the regular use of this guitar to be. In the introduction promo video released by Gibson, he says that he likes to keep his signatures as quote, blank canvases so customers can make it their own. Cool, no problems with that, I agree. But he also says that he wants this guitar to be something you can rock out on for kids to put stickers on or carve into. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure how many kids are gonna be carving into a $1,400 guitar. I know if I bought this guitar, I wouldn't carve shit into it. I feel like I must be missing something because both the regular 2018 P90 and Billy Joe models are $1,400 which in my opinion seems a little steep for an LPJ. Like you can get a Les Paul Tribute or Faded or BFG with double the pickups and a carved maple top for less money. I always thought the point of the Juniors was like a very bare bones guitar for just rocking the hell out of and didn't mind beating up, which from the interview, it seems to me how Billy Joe views them as well. But if I were a touring musician for $1,400, the 2018 Les Paul Juniors wouldn't be my first choice Gibsons because I don't think you're getting the best value for guitar there. I think this would make much more sense as a high-end $700-ish Epiphone, like a pro-level workhorse, but still reasonably priced. Currently, there is no high-end Epi LPJ, so it filled that gap in the lineup. I guess Billy Joe Armstrong wanted to keep playing Gibsons. He didn't want to play Epiphones. With such bare-bones features, which is the points of this guitar, I just don't think it makes a whole lot of sense at $1,400 unless you're a massive fan of Green Day or of Billy Joe Armstrong or of the Les Paul Jr, I guess. I'm starting to ramble and repeat myself now, but yeah, that's my take. Then again, I wasn't planning on buying one anyways, so I guess it doesn't really matter what I think at all. But I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the new signature model? Agree with me? Disagree with me? Let me know in the poll and in the comments. You gotta review the Pro Fusion guitars that are coming soon from Harley Benton. Stainless steel frets, roasted maple neck, etc. seems amazing. Yes, Harley Bentons are fan favorites on the channel because if you've got the buying power of Toman and you're selling direct, you can offer a lot of guitar for the money. These new Fusion and Dynamic models are the perfect example of that, and they're Harley Benton's first stab and kind of pro-level instruments. Both of these new series of guitars have super strap bodies, bolt-on Canadian hard maple necks with modern C profiles and 12-inch fingerboard radii, and in typical Harley Benton fashion, are incredibly feature-loaded for the price. Bear in mind when I'm talking about them, these are not pricey guitars. They range from around $250 to $350, with one exception that's around $400. The first thing you'll notice about these are the insane quote-unquote ultra tops. These are veneers, but with a very high level of depth and detail normally reserved for much more expensive guitars. Now, notably, all the guitars from both series come with stainless steel frets, which is a very high-end feature. Like, for a guitar under 500 bucks, that's pretty much unheard of, and it means your frets will last for a long time. They've got spoke wheel truss rod adjustment systems, and lastly, all the non-Floyd models have Graftech new bone nuts, which is really good. It's always disappointing when guitars are really specced out, but then have terrible nuts, 
and therefore terrible tuning stability as well. The Dynamic Series comes in three finishes, all with ebony fingerboards, natural with a spalted top, amber with a flame top, and my favorite, gray also with a flame top. The Dynamic Series comes in the HSH pickup configuration with Roswell pickups, WSC locking tuners and rolling bridge, and the current price on Toman for these is $244. With the Fusion Series, you've got a few more color options and each one comes with quilted maple tops and your choice of either ebony or maple fingerboards. There's Bengal, there's Emerald, there's Aqua, and there's Charcoal. The Fusion has two types of pickup configurations, HSH and HH. The HSH versions have Wilkinson Tremolos and WSC locking tuners, while the HH versions have Floyd Rose 1000 Tremolos and non-locking Grover tuners. Toman is asking for $290 and $340 for these two versions respectively. There's also one special HSH version with a natural flamed maple top, roasted flame maple neck, and roasted maple fingerboard, which is currently listed at a slightly more expensive $390. I haven't been terribly impressed with Roswell pickups. They're okay, if a bit uninspiring, but with high-end features like stainless steel frets at under $400, these look like amazing starting points for mod projects. So I will be demoing at least one of them, but which ones are you most interested in? Both series, just the fusion, which pickup configuration? Let me know. Poll in the top right. Did you see the new Apex pedal? Yeah, so Horizon Devices, the pedal company started by gent god Misha Mansour, has unveiled its sophomore pedal. It's a follow-up to the highly successful Precision Drive, which is currently my number one go-to overdrive. Before I started using the Precision Drive, I didn't think anything would be able to displace my TS9, but yeah, it has and I pretty much use it for everything now. So I've been waiting to see what Horizon Devices would do next, and it's the new Apex preamp pedal. We're seeing these preamp pedals get more and more popular as the technology gets better as a way to get monstrous high gain tones without needing an absolute monster of a high gain tube head. There's the more mini preamp pedals, the Rev G3, and now of course, the Apex. I was kind of hoping for a new delay pedal, for selfish reasons, I've been looking to replace my gray plastic Behringer Venereal Disease 400. It's a decent sounding pedal, it just looks a little out of place next to a precision drive and a vintage ADC2, but I digress. The pedal looks really cool, same aesthetic theme as the precision drive. It's got all the standard EQ, volume, and gain controls you'd expect from preamp, but it's also got a couple of bonus features that set it apart. It's got a built-in adjustable noise gate, very useful for distorted tones, a switchable tight mode for extra tightness, I assume, and bypassable cab simulation with adjustable mic placement. That's ridiculous. That means that not only can you use it in front of a clean amp or in the effects loop like a normal preamp pedal, but because you don't need a real cab, you can run this straight into your computer's audio interface or into a PA when you play live. Ola England has the only video of it out currently, and it sounds unreal. Anyway, since I've worked with them to do a video of the Precision Drive, I reached back out to them about the Apex. Unfortunately, well, I guess only for me, I've been told that all the Apex is reserved for quote-unquote influencers have already been reserved. Horizon Devices is interested in sending me one, but it'll have to wait quite a while, like a few months before one's available. So here's my question to you. In terms of writing, scripting, filming, and editing, a pedal demo takes about the same amount of time as a guitar demo, but ends up getting much, much fewer views generally. So unless there's a lot of hype around the pedal, like when it first launches, or it's really interesting, I usually shy away from doing pedal demos. Now to be clear, to me, this pedal looks very interesting. It's not the only preamp pedal on the market, and it's not the cheapest either, but it's also so fully featured, it's got everything you need for a kick-ass metal tone in one box. You can use it with a real amp, or with a real cab, or neither if you want to. So personally, I'd love to demo it, especially since I'm a fan of Horizon devices, but by the time I'm able to get one, it might have been out for a while, so if it's not as interesting to you, it doesn't make much sense to make a video of it. So poll in the top right, would you want to see a late review of the Apex preamp panel? Let me know. And that'll do it for this week's episode of Ask a Fish. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and give it a like. Feel free to leave your thoughts on anything discussed in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the little bell for notifications. It's no guarantee, but you'll have a better chance of YouTube letting you know when I've uploaded a new video. All links are below, including social media, the products discussed, and our Discord server, which you should definitely join. As always, thanks so much for watching, you've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.